Alrighty, so in this video I'm going to be fixing up the power supply for my soldering iron and the um, probably the power supply as well, the actual bench power supply in there. The soldering iron uses wow. between like I think it's 15 and 24 volts but this thing only puts out 12 because it's a computer power supply so I might have to leave the power supply it's using at the moment until I can get a boost converter and just run a boost converter off this. There's enough current in it. It's meant to have two 12 volt rails. That's what it says here anyway, but I checked it and it only has one. Dude, what brand is that? You know, it's 120 watts on each apparently. So the main reason for doing this is I just want, cause I have limited power points. At the moment I'm working on fixing up this it's actually an led dimmer i'm using this real ghetto solution for a fume extractor which is just a carbon filter and a computer fan it just sort of just blows that way the main thing i'm using it for is to keep the smoke getting up inside two lenses at the end of the microscope which just go directly to the eyepieces um, one of them got a bit of smoke on it from solder and because it's all sticky with flux and stuff it's made one of the eyepieces just a little bit blurry so i'm gonna have to probably order a new like final stage lens for that one and i've ordered a barlow lens just because this hits too low and i can't get the hot air station under there too easy i got one of those angle pieces but I might cut it shorter, it's a bit too long. So it is actually a genuine hacker, like I do use a lot of clone stuff, but uh, this one's an original one. It's probably 15, 20 years old, I'm not too sure. Uh, the airflow is a bit dicky. It works, it just spins around a lot. I have it set in manual mode at the moment because this is designed to, to do reflow. So you can go through um, preheat, float, and then it drops back off. So like the temperature rises slowly and in stages. But I have it set to manual, so it's just 100% power the whole time. This model does have a vacuum pen, but I don't use that. And the on-off is actually on the handle, which is a bit easier to use. Um, so yeah, that's my microscope. Uh, I just have a spare MacBook there that I use for software and schematics and stuff. But yeah, main thing today is to just tidy up all the wires and things and see how we go. Alrighty, so I finished soldering up PWM module and I have lost the screw terminal thing that clips on the end here. So I'll just hardwire it. Also, I'm gonna wire in the camera for the microscope as well. Not one of those things that runs on like five to 12 volts. So it's gonna be a 12 volt output and I just messed up the focus on it, oops. So yeah, that'll all be powered off. Just one wire that goes up into there. I'll have to, hmm, cause I wanna be able to unplug it as well. So I have to work that out. I'll be back in a little bit. So I've got it all wired up. There's the wire going from the output of this to the fan. And then on the input, I just tacked on another wire and put a barrel jack on there so I can just lug it straight into the camera rather than running on another wire. That's the power supply. And if you're wondering how it's all connected, it's sort of all over the place at the moment. I just used a screw terminal block and I've got a second barrel jack here for the little power supply over there um it's a little gray one on top uh yeah so hmm let's see how it goes uh, i haven't tried it yet i don't know if it's gonna burst into flames and burn my face off but we'll see okay so i've got it all wired up and it's actually turning the fan i've got it set to 100 percent at the moment um this potentiometer is backwards somehow and when i turn it down Makes this really loud buzzing sound. That's probably not good. So what I'll do is I'll try and work out if I can fix that. One minute, 37 seconds later. As I expected, it's just ripple on the output that's causing this thing to buzz. Just being a brushless DC motor, it has all sorts of extra circuitry inside it to sure make the that? fan spin. And because of that, it doesn't like all the noise. So adding this capacitor across the top which is 220 microfarads smooths out the output but we do have a lot less range on this potentiometer like if I turn it up like that you get essentially full speed which is okay I only want a little bit of control over it anyway it's just to make sure 
the fan doesn't run at full speed all the time because it's really loud. Alrighty, so I've got this on a really low fan speed. You can barely hear it before it was super loud and very distracting. You know, at low speed, it still has a good airflow and it stops the smoke coming, most of the smoke anyway. On to the next project. So because the 12 volt rail is common on this, even though I fixed up the ripple in the fan, as soon as I um, connected it to the camera, I still got audible noise from the um, actual camera itself, its internal power supply. If I really need to, I could just run a second connector for the camera to the 12 volt rail or the 12 volt output of the power supply or throw a diode on this or something. But at the moment it works fine, I guess. I probably should just run a second power lead for it, but yeah, oh well. Alrighty, so I also just added in a five volt connection here and that goes over to this just cheap USB hub. So there's a bit more power for that. Yeah, I'm slowly getting there. Alrighty, so um, I let the magic smoke out of something and that was this uh, external hard drive here that I have set up. It's just on an old thermal take liquid cooling block. It's just to keep it cool passively. Um, it's not connected to anything. Yeah, I had the polarity backwards on the input for this because I was powering it off this power supply as well. And uh, poof, smoke everywhere, but that's okay. I'll fix it. This is making a funny sound. It's just the fan. Yeah, it's just the fan heating up against something, but that's okay. The next scene, it'll all be done, hopefully. Alrighty, so the power supply has been installed and everything. I just popped it this way up because it was rubbing against something inside it and clicking. Down in there, it's where I have the terminal block. This is the cable for the fan and the box grip camera and I kept all the um, hard drive cables there so just in case I want to use them one day. Also grabbed another one of these. I had a spare one floating around so I'll just replace the one on the hard drive that I blew up. So yeah that's the setup like it is now. There's the computer, a little power supply down there. It's it's uh, running off the ATX power supply just there, so good. The external hard drive's running off it. USB hub's running off it. Frees up a bit of junk floating around, just power, power bricks and stuff. Yeah, so this is the rest of my uh, setup. I've got all my uh, like soldering stuff here. So I've got preheaters and board coolers and bottom heaters as well. Um, and some random tips, that's like a super fine um, tip for the old Hako station and then in there it's a bit hard to see I've got all my wire and stuff and glue and flux and uh, UV light and things like that and then... just in here I've got all my programming stuff um, things like um, the octopus octopus programmer uh, TL-866, which is just a universal EEPROM programmer. And glue and stuff, and then down the bottom is just junk boards just to practice on. And then up here I've got all these random things. I've got spare tube of flux. These ink refill bottles are really handy because you can fill them full of alcohol and use a little needle to get it where you want it. Yeah, so if you like this video, why don't you subscribe? And uh, yeah, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.